friends, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. This is round two of the paint reading vlog. So sorry in advance that I've basically been wearing the same clothes for like the past three reading vlogs. My life is kind of uh, in upheaval right now, so I've just been wearing the same sweatshirt for two weeks, and I hope you don't mind, but... The painting is very much progressing and they're hoping to get it finished the rest of the house that is this week which is amazing i showed you guys the kind of kitchen transformation last time it looks amazing it's still in there um, and we're really looking forward to cooking in there again putting the hardware up but now it's the rest of the house's turn for paint so before i show you what has already been painted i also want to talk about the book I hope to read over the next couple of days. So my main priority for this vlog is The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. This is book four, the fourth and final book to the Send Lin Ascend series. One of my all time favorite series. This book is also rather chunky, over 600 pages long. I did read 50 pages so far of this this morning and it captured me right away. <sighs> Josiah Bancroft's ability to craft one of the most unique fantasy worlds is really unprecedented and then we also kind of are shifting in multi pov and we're following characters in different places and just learning more about this mysterious place and i love it oh so much so i definitely hope to finish this it's almost the end of the month so i'm hoping to squeeze this in before the end of april but nonetheless this is my number one priority but now in the meantime let's talk paint so we have a primer coat on this wall we have this wall which has been painted the ceiling this wall was already white so it's like kind of a like not as an exciting transformation coming through here we obviously have the kitchen which i have shown many times and i am such a huge fan of but now this front room is starting to have its transformation which is oh so exciting and really brightening up this space it's a super gloomy day today but yeah, everything's just getting a nice coat of white paint. I cannot wait to put my bookshelves up in here. We're gonna replace the ceiling fan and the lighting fixture in here eventually. But for now, we're just focusing on the paint and it's just making the house feel so much more cohesive. Also, the rooms feel bigger because the ceiling paint and the wall paint is the same color. Just lighter and brighter and more open was what we were going for. But to go through here, trying to avoid <laughs> me and my RJ stocks trying to avoid tracking paint throughout the house. The hallway has been painted. This bathroom has started being painted. Let me turn the... You can see they did the first coat of the ceiling and then the trim, but they have to do obviously the rest, but I think it'll really help this space. Clay's office has not been painted yet. It's one of the last rooms that will be painted, but the guest room got a few coats of paint today, which is super exciting. This used to be a bright blue wall over here. So I think this will just make it just a little more cohesive and more our style when the rest of the white paint goes up, but it's definitely going to make it much lighter and brighter. Everything is kind of a disaster right now, but we're really seeing the progress and that is super exciting. It is about 5.30 on Monday. Clay is almost wrapped up work. I have wrapped up work for the day. Clay and I have been eating takeout for the past like two weeks and then I was also traveling. So this week we're kind of doing a hybrid of trying to do what we can with preparing food at home. We can't use the oven, but we can use the microwave. I've been making my adult Lunchables again, which obviously require no heat. I've just been, I miss just, I don't know, making something in my kitchen, even if it's just reheating a soup I bought at the grocery store, like something about it is just a better, a better time. So we have, I think we're gonna have some Whole Foods chili for dinner tonight and some bread and some fruit. And I'm excited. It's a good day for chili. It's so rainy and so gloomy. It was pouring all day and all morning. Great reading weather. Clay and I'm sorry to do K-drama. Called a business proposal. So far, it is fun and over the top. So we're gonna finish episode one right now. Good morning, everyone. I should check that there's coffee in here. Yes, Clay always makes the preps the coffee every night. I'm always grateful for it. <laughs> this is Matilda and I's last day in here. Oh, got mad at me. <laughs> um, we this room is getting. At least I think they're going to start painting this room today or the ceiling. Celebrated this morning by cutting up some berries. 
have my cup of coffee, and I'm actually going to read some of The Fall of Babel, which I've been reading on my e-reader. Um, I need to give you guys my initial thoughts and feelings about this book. Generally speaking, they're so positive. I love this series so much, and I'm just constantly fascinated with where Josiah Bancroft can bring the story in terms of new places, and also just creating such likable characters you fall in love with and love reading from their points of view. This book is super long. I knew going in it was like 600 plus pages, but what I didn't realize was how small the font is. Um, when I compare like the fourth book to the third book, just the amount that they fit into those 650 pages is wild. So I'm only on page like 150 because it's just taking me a long time to read, but that shouldn't be, but that's not a negative to the book because it's so flipping good. So I'm gonna eat my berries, drink my coffee, do some reading this morning, and finally do a check-in. Hi friends, so Matilda is here. We're just hanging out. I'm happy to report I have read the first part of The Fall of Babel, which I wanna say is about 167 pages, and this book is just so flipping good. So again, this is the fourth book to the Senlin Ascend series. The series opens with our main character, Senlin, as he's traveling to this mythical place called the Tower of Babel. It's many floors, its origin is a mystery, its construction is a mystery, and the floors itself kind of all have their own flavors, political system, but it's all kind of part of this machination that is this tower. Um, Senlin has always dreamed of going here, and he's traveling there on his honeymoon with his new wife, but they get separated right when they arrive. And so begins like the start of the series, which is him trying to locate his lost wife. And while that plot line is definitely central and important, the escalation of this plot and story really balloons in so many different directions. Not only do we first primarily kind of follow Senlin, especially in book one, who I adore, but along the way we meet all different types of characters, good and bad, and the points of views that you read from really expand. So book one I would say is primarily Senlin, but then you're kind of introduced to other characters that Senlin has kind of run into along the way and they have their own disparate storylines like desires, beliefs, dreams, all of that. Um, what I really feel like is so successful about the series is that one, and so imaginative, this tower setting is fat this tower setting is fascinating. It's gripping, like learning even just a little bit about how this tower was made or what's happening behind the scenes has always been my favorite part throughout this entire series. Not to mention the writing is gripping, kind of has this literary element to it, and it's all just so very bizarre in the best way possible, but that is combined with some of the best characters. Like, their points of views are so well written, everything is distinct, it's emotional, like I feel so connected to everyone I've read from in this story and the plot itself is so fast paced, it's very intense and again has just grown on itself so well, like the unlocking of one mystery leads us to a new question which leads us to a new question which leads us to a new question. So now going into book four we're like in this wild place that I could have never imagined in book one, but it all felt very logical in the way that it's been like slowly revealed to us and just the pacing is perfect, the characters amazing. Um, and in starting with book four, we're back with the character I feel like I haven't seen in a while and his plot line has just been absolutely fascinating. And while it's very specific to him, the consequences of like what's kind of happening behind the scenes still of course ties into what we know about the tower itself also provides some clarity on the tower and its history but also presents us with you guessed it more questions it's just what josiah bancroft does so well there's a reveal which is satisfying but he keeps making you want more and keeps like introducing like more to the larger conspiracy and it's just so well done i loved reading part one of this fourth book and I'm shifting to a new character now who, this is what he does so well. It's because we shift around so much and like in the moment you are so invested in what's happening and there's like cliffhangers galore and then he shifts you to somewhere else and a part of you is so excited to be back with this character because you haven't seen them for a while and you want to know what's going on in their life. But the other part of you is like, wait, wait, wait. I need to know how this other part is going to end. I wanted to see like where it was all going to wrap up and and that's just what makes this book so hard to put down. I'm reading it slowly because as I mentioned, the font is so tiny in the main book and it's also a long book, but I have read 160 pages and it's just 
this whole beginning sequence has been super revealing and fascinating and now with the shift to the next part like i can't wait to see how the rest of it's going to unfold i mean this book has like character connections galore such wonderful intimate character moments but such large and interesting like political movements happening within one of the most unique locations which is the tower of babel itself it's just wild like the magic the technology it kind of has a steampunk vibe it's just too good it's so good it's by far and away one of my favorite series good evening everyone it's time for an update this room is still they haven't gotten to it quite yet but there's been a lot of progress in other spaces around the house so let's go ahead and do a little bit of a tour let's go a lot of this here is not new but just the kitchen which is still kind of housing some things but going into that room hello clay is now working from the front sitting room um which is essentially done i think we have like a few small touch-ups in here but the walls have all their coats there's clay hard at work and uh everything else it's looking really nice the door was painted today now we are going through this closet or hallway which has also been painted and then we have these two rooms so i think i've already shown you but the guest room has been pretty much completed i think there's just the closet that they're still working on and then coming back through here we have clay's office which got a total coat of paint today fresh which is looking really nice another day another oh my recording light is reflecting off of this another microwavable meal honestly this is super tasty and technically was vegan until i dumped like a bunch of parmesan cheese on top but it's like butternut squash mac and cheese now i'm gonna go oh no <laughs> Et voila, adult lunchable. I'm gonna tilt that continuing to be extra. But look at us, I am 40% through the fall of Babel and gonna read more. Hello, it is the evening. I owe you guys a reading update, which I'm gonna do when we get back. This is the last room without paint in it. A lot of progress was made today. I always feel awkward vlogging when they're here because I don't wanna be a bother to them. Let me prop you guys up um as i'm sure you guys can relate or understand you know oh here's dogs oh she's gonna go fight but yeah i always feel awkward vlogging so i don't want to disturb them or whatever and i've just literally been in this room but i have done reading i am almost at the 300 page mark of the emperor of babel or whatever it's called and i'm loving it and i'll do another reading update i don't think i'm going to be able to finish it just it's longer than i thought happens to the best of us but it's so good and it says nothing about the quality of the book itself i did a big scary thing today which was uh go to therapy and also drive myself to the dentist which both seem like small things to some people but i'm taking it as a win so clay and i are gonna go to dairy queen and i'm gonna get a not a mcflurry dairy queen you know dairy what do they call the dairy queen blizzard i'm gonna get a blizzard as a good job reagan um because i flip and love blizzards they're so good 10 out of 10. so that's what we're gonna do now um i'll walk you through i think tomorrow um i think every room but this room will be done tomorrow and then they're gonna paint this room early next week which is super exciting i've already put i'll show you guys i've already started to put some furniture back i just filmed a video so i kind of made like a filming setup my filming backgrounds for the next like few vid or past few videos i apologize for how chaotic they are but it's just purely based on like what room i can be in uh, but now honestly i think this looks cute but like not all my videos are gonna look like this but anyway let me show you here we are isn't that cozy and the whites oh, we're a fan i need to put up my shelves which i think i'm gonna do this weekend which is ultra exciting but we love to see it to the promised land. Honestly, DQ, 
Blizzards are superior. I haven't had one in so long, but incredible stuff. Hi friends, my incredible meal of blizzard and chicken fingers has been consumed and I wanted to do a reading update. Um, I'm gonna be doing more reading tonight and Clay and I are gonna watch some more of the K-drama we started, which is a business proposal. I'm pretty sure I've talked about that with you guys, but it's really fun and kitschy. Um, but Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft, I am just about 300 pages in about 50% of the way through this book and I don't want it to end. This series is so incredible for so many reasons, but it's just one of the most ingenious and unique stories that also just has so much character heart at the center of it, which just means you're reading some of the most absurd stuff I feel like I've ever encountered. Some of the most imaginative and bizarre and strange, and yet it never loses its heart because you love all of the characters you're reading from in their own weird quirky way and like the humanization that Josiah Bancroft is able to provide the strangest scenarios is just amazing and I think just really suits the series so well. I kind of mentioned this briefly but one of my favorite aspects of the series too is the fantasy component isn't so much like there's magic, but it's more like unclear technology, if that makes sense. It almost has this like steampunky vibe. There's lots of innovation and gear work and machines, and they're all kind of often run by this sort of un known serum and also like the origins of the tower the creators of the tower almost have this like mythical quality to them um that also was tied back to this machine and this harnessing of energy and power for the maintenance and running of this tower is like very central to the story and so i would say like the largest fantasy component is really this sort of mechanism mechanization of the book you can even see in like the main cover like this this guy has like gears on his knees you know and like that is like a part large part of this book plot wise about this book outside of like following our characters as they go on like various adventures and like side quests and main quests and continuously intersect and diverge from one another and coming together in such fascinating pairings and the types of characters you're following too are so fascinating i've referenced senlin but there's such a huge variety of characters which i fall in love with all of them from siblings who have bizarre hobbies there's also side romances and some of them are also queer and it's just like endearing and lovable and like everyone just has their own place within this book the plot itself has really escalated in such a fascinating way it's also telling the tale as old as time this tower of babel this monolith to innovation and the future but it also is a representation of human corruption as well as this sort of pursuit of power and fame and notoriety and this desire to kind of control it all is kind of like seeped into the into the very like seams of the tower itself and you see that manifest in like big and small ways but that's definitely like very much centrally the component and we even see our main characters try to like fight against this corruption this complacency that the tower can kind of like give different people depending on which floor they're on. I'm just constantly fascinated by this book. I'm constantly drawn in. It's just doing so many unique and original things. And obviously I'm trying to be vague here because I don't want to really speak to the plot of the fourth book because while it is absolutely explosive and I could have never guessed anything that is happening right now and it's so satisfying and coming together in such a satisfying way, which is always great to see in a fourth book. I don't want to say anything because spoilers, but just believe me when I say, what the heck? This is a wild time and I love it. But anyway, that's that. I do plan to read more tonight. Um, but first Clay and I are going to watch some K-drama, watch some of our K-drama and just hang out for a bit. Uh, we actually have to sleep in the guest room, which I'll show you. We just cleaned it up, uh, pulled all the stuff off the bed because our bedroom is currently being painted. I'll give you a little looky look. So here is the guest bedroom. This is the bed we built. This quilt is not like a forever quilt, but it is a for now quilt. And the bed is pulled away from the wall because they're still working on the trim and it's drying. But this is where we are staying tonight um, in this almost completed room. Isn't that nice? Good morning from the beautiful and hot donuts we picked up this morning. Happy Friday. Clay is mowing the lawn this morning. Look at him go. And uh... I 
I'm gonna get a cup of coffee. It's Friday, as I showed you. Oh, door's open. Well, Matilda, charge out. Only time will tell. But all I've eaten today is donuts, and I simply have no regrets. It was incredible, delicious, decadent. Shipley's Donuts, 10 out of 10. Um, I'll give you a quick OOTD and I'll show you the progress of the work because so much has been done. We're really in the home stretch. We only have one room left and like a few like finishing coats here and there, um, which is ultra, ultra exciting. So there's that. Also, I just want to apologize for how chaotic all my vlogging has been. I feel like I'm just, it's, it's kind of difficult uh, with the state of things, but I shall be back to regular programming soon. But Anyway, here's me in a bunch of boxes. I'm wearing this dress from Christy Dawn that I bought like three years ago. And I love because it's just a throw on and go moment, but let's show you the house. So you have already seen this room. There's Clay working away. But to come through here, we can officially say, I have to be careful on the floors because they've been cleaning them and they're so slippery, um, that the guest bedroom is completely done it's so much brighter in here and then in here clay's office is basically done besides a few like trim pieces he can bring his desk back in this weekend which is oh so exciting but the very exciting room is not only can we sleep in here tonight but our bedroom got a bunch of painting done today and are you ready ah oh, it looks so nice and fresh and clean um, which honestly could not be just more excited about. It's just, just looks so fresh, which again is what we were looking for. Again, we are gonna be bringing color into the house, but we just wanted a fresh, clean slate. And then the bathroom is basically almost painted as well. And then it'll just kind of like bring everything cohesively. Here comes Matilda together, which um, we are just, a big fan of. We just kind of wanted everything one coat and that we can go through and work to kind of customize where we see fit. Um, and the painters have done such a good job too because this is an older home. There's like a lot of wall damage and cracks and things that kind of needed to be filled as they were painting. So there's like a lot of cosmetic damage that we knew we couldn't address. But my favorite room is definitely the kitchen and I can't wait to put the new hardware on, which let me show you. So we got these drawer pulls, which we love so much. And then we got these knobs, which one second, these like door knobs, which I think are so pretty. Just this like aged brass color. We love so much and I can't wait to put them up in a couple weeks. The coffee for today is pretty tasty. We went to the grocery store and got real groceries, real food, broccoli, vegetables, all of the stuff because we can use our oven again. Hi guys, it's Reagan. You wouldn't know this, but it's actually a few days later. So my goal with this reading vlog was to not just read, but to also document the entirety of the process of the house getting painted. So with that in mind, I wanted to make sure that this vlog could cohesively end with that result. So a few days have passed and we're in the home stretch of the painting itself, which is super exciting. I'll give you guys an updated tour uh, right now. I'm also about to start dinner because I can officially cook on my stove again, which is so exciting. Got a few questions in my last vlog about why I couldn't cook on it before. Um, our painter said that the heat from the stove could like peel the paint um, and we wanted to cure as long as possible to get as strong as possible all of that before i show you guys a tour i do want to talk about the fall of babel because i am on page 400 of this book and i don't think i'll be able to finish this book for this vlog but i will be able to finish this before the end of the month and i am liking this so much uh, i've spoken to like the larger reasons why i like this series but just the imagination the character work and honestly where this final book is progressing i think so far at least what i've encountered feels very satisfying to me i feel like it's so hard to make a fourth or rather a final book in any series like as engaging as its predecessors because it has to work more at wrapping things up versus like 
blowing your brains with like crazy plot twists. But I feel like Josiah Bancroft throughout this entire series has balanced reveals and giving you information but still making you want more and i feel like we're getting a lot of really interesting like whoa that explains so much moments like wrapping this plot up as i am past the 50 percent mark now into the 60 percent mark um that's making me really excited to see where this entire story is going to end i truly can say i have no idea where it's going i don't know where the characters are going to end up i don't know how everyone's fate is going to you know deliver itself in the end but i'm so looking forward to it and the series has just been such a flippin treat you know so i'm gonna give you an updated tour we're really on the last room which is the family room so i've actually been hanging out in here all day i'm still not really vlogging during the day while well, the painters are here because i don't want to disrupt them but i'll try to do a bit more in the morning but Anywho, tour time. Our bedroom, which I have sealed off, this door still needs to be painted. Um, we think the painters are gonna be here the next two days or so, but the primary painting should be done tomorrow and just the finishing touches on the last day. Excuse our unmade bed, but all of these walls in here have been painted with all of their coats, with the ceiling and everything. And then the bathroom was basically finished today i want to say i'm not sure i think i'm pretty sure all the coats are up here i think there needs to be like a few more like as you can tell in here um this room was kind of like half white already um but this wall was like a dark color so that's where we're at oh but the final room i will jump to now but as you can see this is the room getting the big paint treatment right now ceilings have been painted and as you can kind of see like the color starting to go on the walls all of our stuff is pretty much covered which is you know kind of the chaos of this situation but i think this should be done tomorrow which is super duper exciting and i can't wait to see the final result but now it's time for pjs and to make dinner and i'm so 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 excited to cook so Let's do some shopping. Matilda doesn't totally get the concept of fetch. She has to really, I haven't thrown it. Look over here. Want this? Matilda, are you ready? Get on over there. You went the wrong way, girly. It's over there. That way, look. Oh, good girl. Do you want me to throw it again? Millie, drop it. Good girl. Bring it back, Matilda. Bring it back. I absolutely burned the crap out of my fingerling potatoes. These only cooked for like 25 minutes. My oven is just much hotter. I think perhaps that I'm used to. So I'm gonna watch these much closer when I make this later this week. But my goat cheese stuffed chicken and my balsamic Brussels sprouts turned out good. So two thirds success. Good morning, everyone. Hello, how are ya? So good news, we're done folks. The painting is done. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a tour and also guess what I finished the fall of Babel and I have some thoughts it's so interesting because I didn't even realize how controversial the ending of that book is until I read it and like was thinking about it south and I'm like oh I wonder what other people thought about this and it's either like you loved it or you hated it I don't know I wouldn't say like I love this series yes yes the fourth book is probably relative to the other books just because the other books are like five stars or like a four star read to me but like i just in contrast though there's people who really like did not like it but like i kind of vibe with it like i was like i don't really know what's happening right now but like i'm vibing anyway i'm rambling i'll talk more about the fall of babe on my final thoughts and wrap up the vlog in a minute but let's talk paint. So I really only have one main room to show you because all the other rooms I've shown you because they've been complete. And that is the family room. So let's do it. All right, friends, here it is. 
She's light, she's bright, and a mess. The goal of the next few days is to clean because I just feel like my life and house is a disaster. Isn't that right, Matilda? But uh, there's clay. Here it is, it's looking fresh. I can't wait to finally put art up on the wall and make this, hello Millie, and make this place look a little more organized. Because <laughs> now I feel like we can put things back and it'll be great. But yes, it's so nice to finally just be done. All right though, so let's talk about The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. Um, Cause I finished it. Guys and gals, I've read the entirety of this book over 630 pages long. I can't believe it. I do feel like it took me a minute, but we got there in the end. Here's the thing. I finished this book and as I just mentioned, fell into reading positive and negative reviews. Cause it's just fascinating to hear other people's thoughts about an ending of any particular series. What stands out to me about this series in general is the writing. It's creative. I feel like this is really pushing a lot of fantasy tropes. It definitely has more of the vibe of literary fiction. And I do feel like the ending kind of leans on literary fiction vibes, which I thought it actually worked well, particularly a lot of the character elements of the ending. I actually really appreciated. Um, we've been on such a journey with so many different people and I personally love all of the characters in this series. So the Adam sequence, particularly in the beginning of the book, I actually really enjoyed, I missed him. I do wish we got more Senlin within this final installment, but the closing chapters of kind of sitting with different characters, I personally really enjoyed. I felt like Josiah Bancroft personally walked the line between giving us information about the tower and like the lore of the tower while still maintaining the mysticism of the tower. It almost felt a little psychedelic throughout the whole experience, but like we're talking about, I mean, there's other elements of this book that's kind of been psychedelic all along. Like there has been like drugs present throughout the whole thing. So just kind of like upping the ante there personally didn't really like feel out of place. Ultimately the end definitely caught me by surprise. And for me being surprised by an ending, I feel like can be a little refreshing. Um, when you're with a series for so long, you're just kind of expecting sometimes for things to wrap up. So how it kind of ended, I was like, well, that was a choice. And you know what? I'm along for the ride, literally. <laughs> um, I don't know. I liked kind of how everything was given an end, but it wasn't necessarily everything was tied up with a bow. I sometimes like a little ambiguity. Um, and I feel like especially with this type of series and the style it is, it worked. I don't think it was as perfect as like the Hod King. I think the third book in this series was the best one, the more I sit with it. Um, but I do feel like the Fall of Babel was really entertaining. And I really actually love how a lot of the relationship components of this book ended. I don't know, I could go on and on. But the point is, I liked it a lot. I'm happy my house is painted and that's the end of the vlog. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye.